But this is the instrument master from the car. One of the mounting points is completely broken off, should sit like this, and the other one is cracked, so not that happy at all. Anyways, the third one seems to be okay, but with only one of three mounting points really in order, I thought it was the best um, thing to do just to take it apart, see what we can do, how well we can glue and weld this plastic back together so it stays nice and firm. Due to that reason, I um, I really have to take this sticker, this is a security sticker, so you know that the instrument cluster hasn't been tampered with, so the mileage hasn't been cha changed up or anything. I'm going to try to heat it up a bit so it, it peels right off. I think they probably thought of that and made some sort of protection so you cannot... It is a great thing, the timing was just right, as my camera stopped recording and, and um, told me that the SD card is full. So good thing we haven't started yet, now we have a completely formatted SD card and we can start trying to get this thing to open without damaging it, because I would love to be able to return it the way it was. And of course we have this video as a proof that the instrument cluster hasn't been tampered with in any way, it's just that I would love to make sure that it stays in the car nicely. Okay, so it's going to be a loud for a moment as we need to heat this thing up. Okay, 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 what we managed to do is remove it halfway through with literally, literally very little, very little damage. So let me see if we can make it stay like that. There we go. Okay, I call that a mission successful. Even though it is really a sensitive sticker, which is what it's supposed to be and what it's supposed to do, we managed to pull it up with just two tiny pieces that are left of this part. When I put this thing back, it should hopefully um, be just as good as new. Now to replace our paper track, I hope we can use another one, at least for now. So let me see, I haven't done this uh, basically never, but I suppose left hand screwdrivers, yeah, I'm not the happiest that I need to do this, but I'll be more concerned that it stays in the car properly. So get yourself a couple of left hand screwdrivers. The good thing is I have loads of them, just need to be really careful of how do, how do I... Oh, there are some plastic sludges as well, this thing as well. Nice, nice, nice. It's going to be helpful, hopefully. No, not really. Okay, there are quite a lot of clips all around. Yes. Okay, one side is open. Slowly turn it around. Every now and then. Okay, this one. This one, this one, this one. Okay. Okay, we are moving. We are getting somewhere, I hope. Then this one, as well as this one. Okay, looks promising. Not going to celebrate too soon, though. Okay, I think we got it. I think we got it. I'm going to be extra careful because I really don't want to damage anything. Okay, okay, okay. So, the first thing that we need to reach for is the plug for the speaker. I hope I'm in frame. If not, I hope I'm in frame now. The plug for the speaker needs to come out first. And since every single piece is really delicate, I really want to make sure to go extra slowly. Not to damage anything, of course. Okay, but this is, there we go. Okay, we are open. There we go. So this is the plug, this is where the speaker sits. Okay, quite a lot of things. I think this piece over here is NVIDIA GPU, which is supposed to put the image out, out of the rest of these things. I have no idea, to be quite honest, what the rest of those things are. Except that we have a cooling fan over here. Quite a lot of connectors, flat cables all around. I hope we won't be touching any of those. We have something really interesting over here. I think this is a grounding strip because it sits on this thing over here. Never mind. Okay. Okay, I think we are going to have to re remove this first layer of PCB because this is where the carrier sits, the one that is broken. Let me try to show you the other way around. No? What's the... Yeah. This is what we need to fix. It's supposed to be like that and it is broken. So, my plan of action would be to remove remove the first layer, and once we have the first layer removed, we can go ahead and free the carrier up, hopefully. So, the first 
first thing to do would be to free the fan cable. Uh, I hope I'm not hitting the frame too much. Not really handling this for the first time. So I'm trying to be really careful. Okay, so the cables were pointing downwards. Give me a nice small fan. Oh, great thing. Okay, okay now we need the torx, I think. Looks like a torx, which means I have to bring it up. Oh, uh, yeah, there it is. Right there. Right there is our. I would guess Tita. It's maybe T15. No, Tita is. It's a torx 10. I'm trying to keep the operating area nice and clean. Ouch, don't drop anything. Drop two things. Okay. Hmm. Now, the question is does the GPU go out separate of the lean, lean board? That is a question we will get our answer for in just a second. So it's an aluminium heat, heat, sh um, heat sink that houses the fan level and it is glued onto the GPU itself. And let me see, okay, GPU has two smaller torque screws. I'll be right back with you. That tool is easy to get up and grab the other tool set. And then when I saw the two smaller torx screws, then I realized I'm not going to get away. So let's see. Torx 6, I have Torx 6, and I have Torx 8. No, it is Torx 6. Yeah, I have this wonderful set of very precise screwdrivers and bits. So these two are Torx 6, and they are supposed to free free up the whole, yes, no, 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 yes, the whole GPU. I don't know if anyone ever done this, but we have a GPU, and we have a GPU with a heatsink. Really interesting thing to see. There is quite a lot of silicone, I would say this is a silicone, um, how do you call it, this heat, the um, thing that transfers heat. I forgot the name of it, I know what it is, I just forgot how it's called. Anyways, we can leave this in here. This is how it looks like. Okay, looks really, really interesting, I have to say. I'll get a sip of coffee. But just to cool down the excitement. Okay, of course. Okay, we know where the screws go, so those are the GPU screws. I don't think this one was connected. This one wasn't even connected, this corner over here. Okay, interesting, does that mean that we have room for expansion? I'm going to go ahead and unplug all of the flat cables by pulling the connectors upwards, the black piece parts of the connectors. All right, there we go. And then slowly, yeah, put it, make sure to pull the cable slightly upwards and then wiggle it out because there are two notches in the cables, which are supposed to hold the cable in place. So let me just make sure I have both of them unlocked. Oh, I forgot this one. There's another, I forgot the frame, the yellow cable. There we go. Same thing over here. Now, I think what we need to do is unscrew all the black screws we can find that hold the main board in place. Okay. Okay. Let me see. I think five screws. Mm, yes. Not it more. Really? Yes, there we go. One main board component. This is really interesting. It's really, really interesting. I'm going to place it over here. And my IKEA set. My wonderful IKEA set. Good thing I got it on camera, right? NVIDIA. I don't know just how much you can see, but it's an NVIDIA chip, just like I suspected. Make sure to bring everything back into its place. Push down a bit so it has a nice contact. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. These were the connectors that are really funny. I guess they just hold the thing in place because, yeah, this is a metal part. Okay, anyways, now we have three, those three silver screws. And one, two, three, four, five black ones that are hopefully all the screws that hold the thing in place. And I think you can see much better now just how broken this connector here is. So I'm probably going to go and wad this with the aluminum mesh that I use for every plastic repair because that is going to hold it properly. Then it's going to stay in place as it's supposed to. No, this way now. I really got bad at putting it on. Putting this thing. All right. Another T10 over here. Oh, these ones are tight. I don't know why, but they are really, really tight. Oh, these are machine screws. These are not the ones that go into plastic. These ones go right into the metallic part underneath. The metallic is the housing of the LCD, most probably. As I'm speaking, I have no any factual knowledge of it. This is just what I'm assuming. Shorten to have more control. And I'm really scared not to damage any of the flat cables. Please excuse me for having such a bad screwdriving technique. I'm actually really tired that I can feel my hands really, really painfully. All right, all the silver ones are out. Let's go ahead and start with the black ones. So, oh, these are extra long. But stay like that. The copper and frame. Okay, 
second. Oh, this is this is nice. This is exactly what I was thinking was going to happen. And this is exactly what I'm doing. I have chosen to open this thing even though it's not the most, the most um, fun thing to do because, like I said, somebody may say, "Hey, you opened the thing up. You might have voided the warranty." This is exactly the reason why I've chosen to open it, anyways, because the thing was actually broken and there was only one screw holding it in. And this is the piece. This is the other piece of it. Now we don't have anything rattling around, so now we know this is good. Alright, moving on, I think two upper screws should allow us to remove the complete frame, and then we can start repairing it. Which I think we'll get some super glue, and then plastic, what do they call it, plastic water bowl? I think plastic water in place. Then it should be, then it should be, okay. Okay, let me see if I can slowly, yes, we can slowly remove this piece. I'm going to leave these two points in place because they are just, you know, grounding points. So no worries there. If anything up. Made in China, it says. Hopefully the writing isn't too bad and you can read. But this LCD was made in China. Nothing else seems particularly damaged, so this is where I'm going to stop with the disassembly. And this the piece is probably trash. I'm going to go ahead and take my super glue because I need those two things glued together first. It sounds like aluminium. It's, it really does. It feels like aluminium. It looks like aluminium. But it's some sort of fiber composite. There must be a marking somewhere. Marking just on this side. Okay, wait, see. PPSGF. So most probably something something plastic, graphite fiber or carbon fiber or whatever. Glass fiber. Yes. My goodness. This is graphite fiber. So this is a glass fiber reinforced plastic. This is why it looks and feels this way. And you can almost tell that it is aluminium. But yeah. okay, I'm going to get a hold of the super glue and then we will start repairing those two things. Where were we? I would love to place all of those things safely somewhere so they cannot be damaged or whatever this is the first step, this is the second step this is the third step in putting this thing back together I don't think we will need any of those things that we used to open so that's what we will use okay, plan of action plan of action is first and foremost make sure we glue this thing back how it was oops, do not open the glue itself just the tip that's what you think. Nice. Okay. Okay, so. Uh, plan of action is to get this, the break surface. The surface that is broken, covered in super glue, crazy glue, however you like to call it. And then, once that's glued, push it re. I'm going to make a stupid ad. So, like so. And I like to apply a bit of pressure. As it hardens, just to okay, apply pressure in, our, in all possible directions, just to make sure that it gets as the best glue adhesion as possible. So I'm going to set a bunch of unnecessary words there until it starts to tack, and then no, still needs power assistance. This task just really requires you to be patient. May take a couple of minutes, it's a 60 seconds universal glue, even though I really don't believe in the 60 seconds of it. I don't believe it is in universal glue, however, not for 60 seconds. Oh, oops, maybe it is. Okay, I got a notification that my fake money was, del was delivered. Okay, I think I can let it go, let it snow. And now, even though I really hate it, I have to let it. Oh, this didn't, didn't do much. It's been more than 60 seconds, so somebody's lying. Okay, I'm going to leave this sitting upwards. That is a stupid idea. Uh, how do I leave this? Okay, I don't think this is going to do much. Okay, maybe this. We just need to be patient. Okay. With the help of a couple of really mild chemicals. Just kidding, they're just going to hold it up straight like that. Can I do this as well? with a different glue this time, this tiny one, because I wasn't impressed with the gluing capabilities of the big tube of glue. So let's see what the small guy can do for us. AKA if the size really matters. Okay, now, oh, that doesn't look very promising. And it will be that straight out of the box. But then again, not qualified to judge the quality of the glue. I think it, this one holds much better. So this thing goes to the trash probably. Not exactly, and I could leave it on the side. I'm going to leave this. <laughs> sorry, I'm going to leave this to harden properly, and then we are going to start with um, 
applying the steel or the aluminium in this case mesh onto the points where it broke just to make sure that it stays right here and it doesn't break again so we're holding here for now because there is not much going on if you'd like to see the glue dries try some other video so after a couple of minutes it should hopefully be dry i got my soldering iron and some mesh in here we can paint the mild chemicals for their help to make sure not to forget the glue then How do we go around with this? Okay, I think the better point of attack is this side over here because it has more, simply because it has more surface. Push onto it. Ah, right. Okay, like so. This is good. And then I need a hole for where the screw is actually located. Let's see if I can do this thing properly. Okay. Make sure not to cut yourself. Or something like this. Okay, a bit more. Just a tad more on this side. Okay. Nice. Okay. Oh, I wasn't in the frame most probably. Okay, yeah. This is what I did. Okay, and then we are probably going to get another small piece. Make sure that it's nice and flat. Like so. Let's put it in there. Nice. So, uh, we take our soldering iron and something to hold this thing in place. And then I like to start from the middle. Is it not hot enough? Is that the issue? Because sometimes you need to hold it for a minute before the whole mesh heats up, and then when the whole mesh heats up, then it should go through. Let me see. I think we need to be a little bit more patient. Okay, so this thing over here, and then we are going to flip it, and then that should give, give us enough rigidity. And we can do the same thing on the other side. That being said, oh, we can. That being said, I'm going to go ahead and repair the other one on this side. Same thing as here. Nice, and then just cut out where the screw needs to go in. Okay, like so, and like so, like so. Perfect. Without even watching, without taking a single measurement. Nice. Talent. Pure talent. Right? No. Anyways, the other one broke in a different way. Maybe we have to repair it in a different way. Okay, like that, like so. So, try Turn the beater. Is this thing even hot? Yes, it is. Now it seems a bit hotter than it was. That's where we need to go. Great. So those two are going on this side. Let's try again and see if we made any progress. Yes, we did. All right, not much, but we made some progress. Oh, it stinks. It stinks. So you need to make sure not to push too hard on the pieces that are broken. I'm pushing hard on the piece that is, so to say, the main piece of it. How I started to play with me, so it changes from video to photo without any needs to do so. Anyways, I have to take this call, now I'm back, and let's see. Okay, it seems like this isn't hot enough, or something else is problematic. Right. I don't really need to push really hard, because it's cold in here, and aluminium likes to transfer heat really fast, so it is somewhat hard, but the cold needs to heat up properly. And you really do need to heat it up properly. Otherwise, I don't think so. This is hot, alright. No question about that. Let me see. When you press it in real hard, it works. Oh my goodness, I got something in my eye again. Oh, this is super glue. There we go. Okay, now. We are at the broken piece, so extra caution is necessary. And I want to push it really deep in, so it acts like a rebar for the concrete. Same thing, only plastic. Just looking through the same, same thing that, that's happening. We are reinforcing plastic piece with a mesh that acts as a rebar, just like it would with a concrete. All right, so I think I'm happy with that. I think I'm happy with that piece, even though there is a tiny bit that I want to cut out, to cut off. There it is. There it is. Let's see if it is okay. Let me show you what I've got so far. Looks great. So now with this piece, then we can flip it around on the other side, and then I'll be happy knowing that it is fixed to operate. Okay. Get in. Now, properly in. 
just hope that I don't break this thing down through. Polish everything out. Right. Here we go. Right. Make sure nothing sticks out, especially if it fits down here. Make sure that it doesn't stick out. Stick out. There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. Nice. Very happy. There we go. Okay. I would say this part is now done. Let me show you at least this corner, this side of this corner. That is now. That is now properly in there. What we are now going to do is flip it around and put some more of that same mesh. Oh, I need to grab some more mesh. There it is. On the other side. The great thing about aluminium is it heats up really easily and you can cut it with a normal scissors. So it makes it really user friendly. Piece like so. Maybe. I think this is going to work great. I'm not sure, but I think I should. I should. This thing hasn't come to me. Uh, I need to do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's exactly what we are going to do. Hopefully, I'm still in frame. All right. I don't. I have to be really careful not to touch the mesh as I'm pushing it in because, it, like I said earlier, it transfers heat really well, which means that all of it is pretty hot, at least for a finger. That is why I'm using a screwdriver just to make sure that the mesh stays in its position as I'm pushing it into plastic, the molten plastic. Right, once it's once the half of it is in, you can then go ahead and use just the solder here as it won't move anywhere. There we go, there we go, there we go. Yeah, it's now in properly. So this is the other side now. Okay, this is the other side. Okay, just clean the excess off. There is a bit more of it that I want to trim. Just the edges. There we go. Now, this now looks properly well done. This now looks properly well done, and I think that nothing else is necessary for the repair of this part. However, I think this hole right here needs to stay oh, in shape. Because it sits. Huh? Oh no, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Anyways, yeah, one of them is now fixed, and I'm really happy with the results. There is nothing sticking out, nothing that can damage the PCB or anything else. Because that we need to be, sorry, that we need to be mindful of as well. On the both sides, nothing. So we can move on to the next corner. Uh, let me just, yeah, that's this one. That was this one, and do the same thing over here. I don't understand why, but it, maybe it's the plastic because some of the plastics are really easy to melt, and some, like this one, really want to let you struggle first before you can do anything, and then once it starts, much easier. Anyways, we started nice and good. There you go. I like when I can iron it out like this, so it stays nice and flat. There you go. Once it's in like this, I know that there's nothing in exactly what we want. Okay, now slowly move towards the part that was broken, and that's why I need to use a lot less pressure. to get removed then to make this thing as nice as possible make sure that every repair you do is really nicely done okay there we go okay a couple more there we go 
this is the first step. So this is now much, much better than it was. And I'm happy putting this back into the car. No problem whatsoever if this is going to hold. Of course, it is going to hold. Because, you know, this is now as good as anything. Okay, moving on. Moving on, what did we say? We said this piece goes in like so, right? A bit of a tricky one because it's a corner. Nothing to worry about because still manage it. I just really hope you like watching these videos as much as I like doing this. It is a really satisfying process, even though it stinks. So try not to inhale this molten plastic. And I try to slowly exhale towards the, the piece that I'm preparing, so the fumes go the other way, not in my face. And then use compressed air, wider lungs, compressed wider lungs. And clean. With that, I can say I have properly repaired this thing. This is now really, really stiff. With a piece of mine, I'm going to pour some more super glue in these cracks, like so. That is completely unnecessary. However, like I said, just for the peace of mind, is there a crack on this side? This side, yes. I'm going to pour some glue in it. There we go. Right. Now, I will let this glue harden for a minute or two. Once it's hard or dry, we can start the reassembly. I'm going to unplug the soldering iron just to make sure it's And it's going to take a couple of minutes before this thing is all dry to put everything back inside. See you in a moment. Let's see just how good my remembering skills are. And spoiler alert, they are probably terrible. However, the glue is dry, and I am happy to report that this is very, very well prepared. If I remember correctly, the first step to reassemble this thing was to put this thing slowly back in place, like so. Make sure the one, two, there it is, there it is, the cable. Where I put all the cables are on the upper side, not, not under the carrier. Is everything in as it should be? I don't know. Ouch, hopefully so. One, two, three, four, five. Seems to me that everything is in its place. Wonderful. Wonderful. Three silver ones. The silver screws go here, here, and here because they are screwed into the aluminium housing of the LCD. Like anything else, always start by twisting the screw in the counterclockwise this direction until it clicks. Because when it clicks, you know that the screw has found its previous grit. This way, you can never cross thread a screw hole. You now need to make sure this is properly oriented. Oops, it isn't. Take your time, there is no need for us to hurry anything. Make sure everything is how it's supposed to be. Okay, not going to touch on anything all the way yet. I don't remember this being like. Yes, 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 so this is the right orientation as the thing needs to be. Yes, yes, yes. All is good, all is good. Now we can try to put everything down all the way. There it is, the third one. Make sure it's nice and tight. There we go. There we go. There we go. This is not tight, that means the rest of the screws are also ready to go in. Minus one small leak, they are all. The tips of the screws are covered in plastic, so make sure to get them cleaned first. I use just a little bit tiny touch of steel wire, steel brush, steel wire brush, just to get the old plastic out. Just so that the new screws can grab onto the new threads or, or the old threads nicely. Okay. I should have done this off the table. Great. I never, never thought I would be using steel wire brush on a virtual cockpit. But you live and learn, I guess. One, two, three, and two up here, four, and five. That's all this. Start with. Yeah, sometimes they don't when it's plastic. There it is, this one did. So you probably can't hear that, but it's a really subtle click. There it is, this one wasn't so subtle, so I hope you heard that one. There is no one. Um, it's a subtle click, but it tells you, okay, the screw has found its previous 
pretty smooth, so we know that you are not going to cross with it. And I'm, I have to stand up. So we can pass through. I'm going to return here. For five knots all the way. And we're going to tighten those two stages. So our stage two has all the way. Nothing crazy, just make sure that they are tight. Because those are, after all, plastic pieces. Three. Four. But there we go. There we go. Now the fun part begins. We have to take a sip of coffee before it starts being scary. Okay, we have a main board, motherboard, however you like to call it board. It goes in like so. And you will know you have the right orientation because there are guiding pins all over the place. I would pro probably, 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 I'm probably going to put the screws in first and then put the black cables back in. Again, five screws, we are starting from the bottom here. Counterclockwise with a slight pressure. Sometimes you hear the click, sometimes you don't, but it's in plastic, and nevertheless, you should try to stay consistent with that, make it your habit. Okay, there it is. And the two, these two ones are really important to be really tight, because they are grounding points for the PCB as well. Okay, so now we can be really, really careful here, because if you slip, you're probably going to damage something on the PCB, which is definitely something that we don't want to do. Also, you need to be really mindful of the torque spec. There is none, so you have to uh, kind of have a feeling for it. Okay. Use just a couple of fingers. When it's tight, it's tight. Don't ever give them. Let's make sure these two are tight because they are grounding points. The main board is in. We can go ahead and connect the flat, uh, the flat screw, flat cables. Most probably, I'm going to need a help of two screwdrivers. And this is really a tedious task. There we go. Make sure. They are locked properly. The big one. Where is it going to be? Is it going to be a headache? The big one. Let's see. Oh, it's in. It is in. Okay. Okay, I'm starting to get good at this. Okay. Okay. All right. All good so far. We need one more. And this is the thing. When you take your time, when you're really, really careful, there is really nothing much more you can do. But it is at the same time really enough for you to do so in order to get. Uh, should I? Yes, I'm going to use an unpopular pin. Is it a straight pin or is it under angle pin? Yes, it's just a tight fit. It's a tight fit. And I would really love to know. There is an NVIDIA logo, so I was right. An NVIDIA logo in this corner. And then there is a number over here, just above. And it says, just a bunch of numbers, really. T30AGS minus Q minus A3. That's what the chip says. So 1432, 1433A3. NMR 215.M9W. Okay, if anyone is interested, you know which graphics card is installed. Okay, this goes in like that, and on top of that, make sure that it sits nice and tightly. Great, everything is in its position. I'm going to screw a couple of those in first because they hold the GPU in place. Okay, and once we have that, there we go, then we can relax a bit. And the second one. No, no click on that one as well. Four screws holding the heatsink and two small T6s holding the GPU in place. But really, they all hold the GPU in place. Nevertheless, we are installing all of them in. Nice. Okay. And the fourth one is in as well. Now, the two small one, ones and the last two screws to go in actually, they hold the GPU and probably give it a grounding point as well. There it is. Nice click. Okay, make sure that it is tight, but not over tightened. Second one, there we go, nice click, especially because this is a machine um, thread, so we always click nicely. Thank you, this wonderful piece of tools. All right, a cable there is this, and the cable, and this should be almost the last step. We need to make sure that we put the fan back inside, snake the cables the way they were snaked. <laughs> is that even a word? So put the connector back in, make sure it's all the way in, nice. One last thing is the connector for the speaker. Oh, this is the poor one, this small one. Yep, yeah. the best way to go around is to get it from here, and then just... Okay, that should be it. Now, very important, be really careful not to pinch any of the flat cables, you know? Make sure the speaker connector wasn't properly installed, actually. Now it is. 
belt in. Okay, it wasn't in properly. Okay, so we need to start one side and then just go around. Both happens really fast, to be quite honest. There we have it. One prepared virtual carpet. Absolutely. Last thing we need to do is see if we can save the security sticker by placing it back almost the same way it was. Okay. Yeah, I would say nine out of ten. Nine out of ten. You can see two small things, two small scratches, but other than that, nothing much. Everything else sits in its, in its place, and we have both both connectors, both mounting points. Excuse me. Properly saved. What I would really love to do is clean this thing out. I just need to find out what is the most suitable thing to use. But that will conclude this video. I hope you never need this sort of thing repair. If, however, you do, this is the way to do it. And I hope you never use my video for illegal purposes of tampering with mileage and stuff like that because this is really not what I would love you to do. See you in the next one. Bye.